In this video, I'm going to share a special tool for debugging that completely replaces the need to reach for not just console.login, but also breakpoints. Context switching from debugging tools like logging to the console or breakpoints can reduce developer productivity by 40% due to something called cognitive overhead. Now, here's the thing. According to Sophie Leroy, an attention researcher at the University of Washington, each context switch incurs something she calls an attention residue, where residual focus on previous tasks degrades subsequent performance by 28%. Think about that. The task you just started is losing 28% of your attention to a previous task. This shocking start led to my journey to find a less distracting developer workflow. Is it possible to debug without having to switch attention from a coding context to a debugger or a terminal? Can I simultaneously stay in a coding flow while being informed of the data flowing through my implementation? Let's find out. To demonstrate this problem, I've cloned a popular open source library. It's called AI Chatbot and it's maintained by the Next.js team, which means that it's being, it's written in Next.js. Now this project is perfect. By the way, what the project does is that it allows you to take an AI API and plug it to a UI, to this UI, this AI Chatbot UI, and then you can basically chat with that AI endpoint. But why this project is perfect is the fact that it doesn't have any tests written against it. No unit test, no E2E test, no integration, integration test. And that means that if you want to make any change to this repository, you have to do that carefully. It's a very fragile project. If I want to make a change to this project, I have to understand how data is flowing through this project. I have to be sure that I know what exactly I'm doing before I do that. And that would lead me to using debugging tools to make sure that I'm actually making the right changes. Now, with that in mind, Let's say I want to make a change to the history API route and the history API route in this project basically allows you to take a look at all the chat history that you've had with this AI. So how it works is simple. You get the user session, you check if the user is valid. If it's, not, if it's an invalid user, you send back an unauthorized message to the browser. If we're good, we just send back the chat, we fetch the user's chat and then send them back the chat or send the client back the chat. So let's say I want to, or maybe I'm trying to make a change to this project and for some reason, the session object isn't behaving the way I'm expecting it to behave. So what it would intuitively do is maybe log the value of session to the console. And then once you've done that, you can start your terminal, run npm, run dev to start this project wait for it to start. Once it's started, open your browser, refresh locals 3000, give it a moment, then head back to your terminal, and you can see that we'll have this session objects locked to the console. But you can see all the steps it took me to get to this point. Think about the fact that there's a chance, let's say I'm looking at this ID, there's a chance that this ID is deeply nested in this JSON object. Now I have to deal with a long log of JSON object to find out the ID of this user. Now the alternative way to deal with this is instead of logging this value to the console, we can stop the server, clear the console, then open the Visual Studio Code Debugger tab. And by the way, I already have a launch.json debugger configuration set up here. So what I'm going to do is just hit the play button to start this debugger. This is going to open the browser and then I'm going to wait a few seconds for the browser to finish loading here. Then once it's done loading, I'm going to go back to my code editor, and then set a breakpoint at the line where we are creating a session variable, then head back to the browser, refresh, and then wait till we hit that breakpoint. Now, once we hit the breakpoint, what I'm going to do is step over this line and then I can inspect the value of the session object. I can dig into the user and I can find the user's ID again. Now, this approach is definitely better than logging to the console, but just like logging to the console, we'll have the same challenge. For either of this approach, what we'll have to do is that we'll have to, first of all, switch context from our coding view from the editor to either the terminal or to the debugger tab to understand the data we're working with. We have to maybe go to the browser, check if things are working as expected, and then come back 
to the editor to make a change. And you can imagine how many times you have to do that for every session you sit down to make some change to a project. So what I'm going to do now is see if I can give you a better approach to dealing with this situation so you don't have to constantly switch context. You've seen the context switching problem. How do we go about solving it? Now I have to warn you, the solution I have here might be a bit uncomfortable if you are the kind of developer that prefer to ideate first before you start writing tests. Now that's the kind of developer I am. I like to play with an idea first before I actually write some tests to make sure that that idea, I have some confidence in the implementation of that idea. But to take advantage of what I have to share with you today, I want you to have an open mind to the fact that you might need to write some tests alongside the feature you are ideating or implementing. But I promise you, the test you need is just a single test that covers the execution path of whatever implementation, let's say a function that you want to test or you want to debug. And the great thing is today you can just ask AI, depending on your code editor, to generate this test for you. That said, let's jump in and see the test I've generated, not written. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and show you the tool that's going to end up improving your developer experience when it comes to debugging. All right, so if I open my test file here, you can see that I'm importing the get function and then calling that function in this test spec and just testing this function. And that's all. Now, the tool we're going to take advantage of today is called Wallaby. And to install Wallaby, you go to the extensions tab in Visual Studio Code and then search for Wallaby. When you find it, you need to install it. Now, I already have this installed and I have to let you know that Wallaby isn't a free tool it has a generous license, but it's not a free tool. But I think it's worth the investment after you've tried it out and seen how much it's going to improve your experience. And by the way, I have to let you know that Wallaby is not sponsoring this video in any way, and they don't even know I'm making this video in the first place. All right, let's jump back in. Now to use Wallaby, all you have to do is open your command palette and search for Wallaby Smart Start and then run it. Once it's done starting, you can see that we'll have these green squares in our Visual Studio Code gutter. And this is just indicating that we have all of these lines covered and that Wallaby is running. And what Wallaby is going to do is that it's going to constantly run in the background. And by the way, the way it knows to test your file automatically is that it, it reads your project and sees that you have a config, a test config file for, I think it works for most testing framework, including vtest, jest, and so on. But it reads this file and uses that to test your project. All right, back to the test. So Wallaby is going to continuously run this test in the background. Every single time you make a change, it's going to reflect. It's going to watch that, watch out for that change. It's going to run your test and make sure that everything is working as expected. But the beauty of Wallaby is that if I switch to the route file, you can see that these lines are also covered. I'm going to hide my terminal here. I'm going to hide the sidebar and I'm going to stay in this context while figuring out the data flowing through this function. And how I'm going to do that is, let's say I want to understand the value of session. All I have to do is open the command palette and search for Wallaby show value. You can see that just on the same line, I'm seeing the exact value that session has. I don't have to log this value to the console to see what the value is. I don't have to look at the debugger tab to see what this value is. You can set a shortcut to this show value command. I've set mine to be GV. So if I hover over any value and just hit GV, you can see that the user object contains ID with a value test user ID. I can do that for the ID itself and it shows me the value of ID. Brilliant. Now what happens when you actually want to take advantage of a debugger? Now this is going to sound <laughs> like Wallaby is sponsoring this video, but I promise you they are not. But I think Wallaby has the best debugger in JavaScript, hands down. I haven't seen anything that comes close. Chrome, Visual Studio Code, they can't, they, they are not anywhere close to Wallaby's debugging uh, feature. And by the way, if you know any tool like Wallaby that works for other programming languages like Go and Python or Rust, please let me know in the comments because I'm really interested to see if there are other tools like this for other programming languages. Anyway, back to debugging with Wallaby. There are two ways you can do this. It's either you open the test file 
find any of the test spec and above that test spec all you have to do is click the debug text above the spec and this is going to start the debugger and break the execution at the first line in the debugger then you can start stepping through this particular execution path using the debugger control that wallaby has now i'm not going to dive into this wallaby feature or its story based feature for debugging this is going to be an entirely different video but just know that if you take a look at the, the wallaby documentation for debugger it's the best tool i've seen for debugging in javascript if i keep step stepping over when i get to this function i can step into this function and then i can inspect this function but this is the first way to test or this is the first way to debug with wallaby the second way happens to be my favorite because it allows you to get to any line in your actual code base not just the test file but the code itself the implementation itself and start a debugger that breaks at that point so what i'm going to do here is I'm on line 11, I want to start debugging from this chat variable and all I have to do is open the command palette one more time and then search for wallaby debug test, hit enter and wallaby is going to start the debugger and then stop debugging once it gets to line or rather break this execution once it gets to line 11 and then I can go ahead again and take advantage of things like my handy shortcut here to see the value of chat which is an array of chat and that's my friend we've come to the end of this video i hope you found it useful and i hope it helps level up your developer productivity that said i will see you in the next video bye